Well, welcome again today to Remote Management for IBMI Backups. Um, we're going to talk about hands-free backup and recovery and how we can integrate that with Robot Save. But I would say 90% of what we talk about today can be applied to backups in general on IBMI. So this is, you shouldn't look at this as just a, a product pitch, but more really everything that uh, goes along with backing up IBMI. So we're going to have some polling questions today. Um, we're going to have questions and answers, and a few of you have sent some questions in already about golf or tips about golf. That's great. Um, but we're talking about yes. backup and recovery stuff, right? Yeah. So we have that going on, and uh, let's just uh, get started. Uh, Chuck, um, who are you? What do you do for Help Systems? Well, I've just celebrated 21 years at Help Systems, Tom, focusing mm -hmm. on IBMI, power systems. Yeah, thank you, sir. And I've uh, been working on the platform since 1990, helping people automate their backups, accomplish various automation and security tasks on IBMI, and it's uh, been a lot of fun. Yeah, excellent. So Chuck, Chuck's also our local uh, Q user vice president, so he's involved in the local user group and bringing education to the group here. How long have you been doing that? Oh, uh, let's see, probably six, seven, eight years now, involved in Q user, maybe even a little longer. Wow, awesome, awesome, great. And then I'm Tom Huntington, uh, Executive Vice President, Technical Solutions, been with help. It'll be 32 years this end of June, so we're getting really close to that. Yeah, holy cow, isn't that crazy? Started with the AS400, you know, I have more gray than the current AS400 today, so, but that's okay. Love what I do, been helping uh, educate you and bringing different uh, webinar topics. We've got a lot coming up we got this backup and recovery one we have uh, a solution edition webinar coming up we have uh, Steve will back to talk to you this summer we have Randy Watson on um, performance uh, capacity planning uh, we have the systems administrator day coming up in July so we'll keep rolling things like we have for many years and we thank you for joining us um, so let's uh, get off to our first uh, polling question and we'll Turn off the crazy webcam so that we're not in your face all day on that. And let's uh, let's do our first polling question here. Um, let me pull that up for you. So the first question of today is, what do you use for backups today? Um, are you using CL scripts with with tape or virtual tape library? Uh, BRMS backup and recovery of media services with tape or VTL. Uh, the Go Save menu, where you can go and back up everything. We'll show you that. Uh, Robot Save with Taper VTL, or you're not sure. It's kind of a new area for you, and you haven't uh, uh, done backups before. So thank you. Uh, looks like we're getting a good response here. You know, it's amazing, Chuck. There are a lot of different things that people are using for backup on IBMI. Absolutely, and we'll talk about some of those things today. Uh, I've spoken with several of our customers who ha are using a cloud backup technology. Virtual tape library has really caught on. I mean, Tom, how long have we been using virtual tape library on IBM I here at Help Systems? Wow, like I'm shaking years? my head. Oh, yeah, it's really, yeah, at least I would say 15 years now already. Yeah, working with exactly, them. and yeah. great luck. All right, let's close this first polling question and take a look at our results as we share those out to you. What do you use for backups today? Looks like CL scripting, 22%, uh, a good big bulk of you, 60% on BRMS, 28% uh, go save menu, 6% robot save, and 6% who are not sure. All right, thank you. Oh, I forgot to tell you too, this webinar is gonna be about 45 minutes long. Our agenda today is what it takes uh, to make a good backup on IBM I. We'll talk about that first. What technology support unattended backups? I think we've learned a lot as we've gone through this epidemic. How to track volumes automatically uh, with the Robot Save product and what it has to offer. So let's roll into our break out into here. What is a good backup on IBM I? That's probably the most important thing. And as you know, we do the uh, marketplace survey every year. And um, we wanna first of all, talk a little bit about what people are using from the survey. It looks like 48% of you are still dependent on some form of tape for recovery. And 
uh, 27 percent with virtual tape libraries, and then uh, nearly 60 percent that have a high, av high availability um, built into their recovery plan too. So really good to have you with us on, on this uh, survey from uh, 2020 uh, Marketplace study. Uh, by the way, we'll be doing that again in the fall, just like we've been doing for the last six years. Hard to believe it'll be seven years. So let's talk about how do you know you have a good backup on IBMI? I always tell everybody, Chuck, no matter what, if I were to sign on to your system, in probably about five minutes, I'd have a good understanding whether or not you're doing good backups on IBMI. Now, that's just one partition, right? Obviously, take that times every partition you got to look at. But there are some very simple things that you can do. And a while ago, I wrote an article on audit your backups. And here's the URL for that. By the way, you'll get these handouts. I don't expect anybody to write that down. Um, but there's an article on how to prove that you can really recover your backups without you know, technically testing the recovery plan. So you can look at QHIST. QHIST has a lot of great information about backups. It shows you things like record locks. It shows you what you backed up. There's some save data areas out there. And again, um, for the various save commands that you're running, these data areas get modified, not the actual contents of the data areas we would think, but the actual save date time of the data area gets updated. It's a little tricky, but you'll see that in the article. Um, you can certainly review your backup CLP to make sure you got everything covered I'll remove, and or review your backup product rules if you have BRMS or robot save. But then ultimately testing your recovery. Um, reality is, and many people who work in this area will say the same thing, if you never do test your backup for recovery, do you really have a backup? So you do need to have a hot site, uh, test with your business partner, uh, test at your friends, I don't know, wherever you go, you need to have some place to test your recovery. Maybe you have another partition. It's pretty easy these days to spin up a partition too. All right, Chuck, over to you. Yeah, thanks, Tom. So uh, over the years, of course, IBM has done a really good job with fine tuning the uh, backup process, but the commands themselves have not changed much over the years, and I think it's uh, it's worthwhile to reflect back on the various commands that are required in order to guarantee that you will have a good experience when you do that disaster recovery test. And the first command is save sys, so that is the command that will back up your operating system, all your PTFs, and it does require that it be ran in what's called a restricted state. All right, so that's where all of your subsystems are ended other than your controlling subsystem. And Tom, recently I was on a system that did not have Q-Control as a subsystem, but had QBase as the controlling subsystem. So you might see something like that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking with a customer uh, over the past month or so, uh, they execute the save sys command about once a quarter and i'll explain further why they do that but uh, they use a cloud backup technology as well so when should you run the save sys command after you apply ptfs you should uh, back up using the save sys command to back up your operating system as well as the ptfs now as part of the save sys you're also executing as part of it the save security data and save config those two commands can be executed separately outside of the save sys operation and they could be executed literally with your daily backup. So if you're using a CL program, you should incorporate those two commands as well. They do not require a restricted state. All right, Tom, let's, let's move on. So other commands that you might be using, save lib, and there are certain keywords you can use with the save lib. So I've got customers who are executing save lib over only their critical production libraries but you may be running the save live all user command to get all your user libraries backed up or the other keywords of non-sys or ibm there's also the save changed objects that will back up those li those objects from libraries that have been previously saved but those objects have changed since the their uh, previous library backup typically the save live command is executed on a daily basis. Save DLO, boy, that's a throwback, isn't it, Tom? It sure is. 
That's yeah. surprisingly, I run into people still with important things in there. Yep. So that that backs up the uh, data in the QDoc uh, library, and it's the old format where that particular file structure uh, only allows for a, a, a naming convention of 8.3, eight characters on the left side of the document name and three characters on the right, kind of the old PC DOS type format, not used much and actually should not be used much anymore, but it's required to do a complete restore of your system, save DLO. And then finally, the save command. Boy, this command has certainly grown in importance over the years because there's more and more open source technology, Java technology, web source, HTML, um, uh, ACS, client access, et cetera, those types of objects from the directory structure. This is absolutely critical to understand, but it does complicate restores a little bit. You know, the thing, Chuck, that people should realize too, a difference between if you're still using DLO and SAV is, you know, we deal a lot with this now with Robot HA because we're in the HA data replication space. You can't journal QDLO, but you can journal SAV which means I can anything that's in there, I can replicate in real time from one partition to another. Ah, uh, good point. Yeah. So then we have the Go Save menu, right? Um, many of you have been used the, using that. Um, this allows you to go in, uh, just type in Go Save, and it gives you all the options for running all these commands. Uh, it is up to you, however, to make sure you execute all the right options from here. If you do do save 21, that is going to back up uh, everything on the system, but it's gonna put you in a restricted state, meaning nobody else can be on the system. And you know, my opinion is if you have all the time of the day and you have uh, users that aren't using the system after hours, then why not do a full system save every night and, and automate it? Uh, why not, you know? Now, the other thing people don't realize too is behind the scenes, you can actually retrieve the CL source for these various options and modify them. And um, that can and can, that could cause some problems too. If somebody, if you happen to inherit a system and you've been doing save 21 and the previous administrator here <laughs> um, modified your option, that could happen to you actually. So, um, but it does require downtime. And, and so it's not always a favorite of mine because Chuck and I are really in the business of running IBMI uh, totally unattended. Now, another little chart I'd like to share with you, and I was really trying to find something somewhere that was a little more up to date. Uh, I just didn't feel like recreating it, but this this little menu or this little chart does a good job of showing you, like if you do save 21, this is everything you get, save 22, save 23, and of course, the individual save, sec data save config, SAV, um, you know, commands that save, the various parts of the system and what you're getting with a save sys versus a save live non-sys and what you're not getting with save live non-sys. So nice little chart to have, pin up on the wall somewhere. I wish it was a little more clearer, but it's been around for many, many, many years. So, but again, remember a good backup is one that you can recover from. So make sure you test what you're doing. So on to the next topic, which is, can I run this stuff unattended. I mean, really, that's the business that we're in, and we want to help you get there. Uh, in our IBM Marketplace study, we do ask the question, do you run IBM I fully unattended? Um, and really, what I mean by that is that the system runs itself some way, somehow. It's products from help systems, it's CLs that you've written, but at the end of the day, um, you're there maybe during normal business hours, and eight to five, you go home, and the system runs itself. It monitors itself. Uh, 24 hours, seven days a week. Um, that's really kind of the, the goal with unattended operations. And of course, our life's changed a little bit here lately. I'm working from home, Chuck's working from home. Uh, many of you are still working from home that are with us today. You know, what changed with this COVID-19? Well, one of the big things, uh, Chuck, is no one's in the office, right? How does that impact your operations? nobody's in the data center, or you have limited staff now that can be in the data center. The team, the data center team is limited in how many people you can have on each shift. And if you're doing all these things manually, obviously it gets in the way. Maybe your carrier service stopped during COVID-19 because they couldn't find staff or whatever the issue may be. 
to get your backups off site. So what did you do there? Management all of a sudden is more nervous about business data recovery because all these things are going on. What's next, right? What's next? There's this fear of the unknown now. And so all of a sudden there's this heightened urgency around making sure that we have a good backup plan in place. And then of course, these manual procedures get in the way of working from home. You know, we've had customers reach out to us about reports that they're printing. And of course, really in the backup area, uh, there's several things that, that happen in that area and we'll share those with you shortly. So over to you, Chuck. All right. Yeah, let's talk about roadblocks. So first of all, a restricted state save. Tom showed the go save 21 menu option. And of course that has to be run from a remote console or a system console that's running in queue control and it's run interactively, right? So there are ways to automate that. We're, we'll talk about that a little bit today with uh, uh, Robot Save, but that is a roadblock for running unattended. So think about finding a way to automate that. Second is the manual logging of tape volumes. Uh, talk to customers all the time that they are required to log which tape volumes are used when they run their daily backup or when they run their weekly backup as they're moving tapes off-site and so forth. So again, it's a manual process. We're all about automating. Off-site storage, Tom's already mentioned uh, some of the issues around COVID and having off-site storage. Guess what? Uh, using uh, virtual tape technology, for instance, you could easily move your backup data off-site without having someone pick up a tape volume. All right, running out of tapes, that's something that we definitely have to think about is keeping our inventory uh, up to date, but also, Tom, you know, I know this is one of your, uh, you bring this up all the time, poorly written business applications that do backups from a menu and then lock up the interactive session while they're running a backup. They don't actually submit it, they run it interactively. Yeah, they're really trying to make the application um, simple, but in reality, they're um, penalizing you as an end user of that application because it's you can't get rid of those interactive backup kind of things that they built into their menu system. Exactly. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about restricted state saves. Uh, remember, save sys requires a restricted state, but saving your security data and doing a save config, which are required for doing a restore, those can be run anytime. So we you know, encourage that you include those in your daily backups. As far as doing a restricted state save, for instance, the customer I mentioned uh, typically does a quarterly save sys so they do a go save 21 once a quarter to uh, collect everything and that just reduces the amount of time that they have to spend in the office or babysitting a, a backup and then there are utilities such as the robot save restricted state utility that does a full system backup we use that on our demo systems to back up our demo environment across i think it's uh uh six or eight uh, IBMI partitions runs every weekend and does a complete backup of the system, uh, basically emulating a go save 21, puts the system into a restricted state and runs the backup, takes it out of a re the restricted state note and also sends out some notification if there's any issues. Yeah, you know, I think the important point to drive home on this whole restricted state thing is the reason you're doing restricted states is to back up the operating system where could you get another copy of the operating system if you had a problem? Okay, where could you get another copy of your business data if you had a problem? And that's the way you should be thinking about this. Um, so save sys, hey, it's important. It, it really eliminates the hassle factor of recovering a system. But at the end of the day, business-wise, it doesn't matter, Chuck. It really doesn't matter. That makes sense? It does. So I'm manual volume, pardon? I'm on board. You're on board, You're, I've convinced you. Okay, so manual volume logs. Um, you know, there are, there's been automated, you know, tape tracking, TMS, cataloging, whatever you wanna call it on the, uh, you know, AS400 first, then I-Series and now IBM I. Do you realize it's been IBM I now um, longer than it was AS400 when we hit June 21st? Think about that. Yet a lot of you still call it AS400. 
So anyways, uh, manual volume logs can be can built can be done for you automatically um, with with backup and recovery software. You add in virtual tape libraries and now you eliminate the tape mounting and guess what? You have automation. And when I say don't do it, don't do this. Don't be doing manual volume logs today. I mean, it's so archaic, I hate to say it, and I don't even know how to be nice about it. And I think maybe I'm just in a bad mood today, Chuck. I don't know oh. <laughs> when I say stuff like that. <laughs> just, <laughs> but don't do it. And then offsite storage, um, you know, where they opened their COVID-19. You know, I, I put this in here and I don't know, did people have troubles with uh, getting their backups offsite uh, during COVID-19? I didn't hear much from our customers on that. I'm assuming that people did at some point. There were some issues with who's taking the tapes offsite now with this going on. And because think about it, do you wipe down every <laughs> tape that you handle, right? Um, so, and then think about today's security and regulations. You know, I've always said that, you know, taking backups manually off site um, and giving them to a third party who's not part of your organization is quite concerning when it comes to security and regulations. So that's why the popularity of virtual tape libraries has come to play. And we have many different options today on the IBMI platform. And you can use them to basically electronically move your uh, data to offsite storage. So you could have a VTL in Chicago, a VTL in Minneapolis, and you could back up to Chicago and have that VTL replicate to Minneapolis. And it's just doing it in the background. And you know, the nice thing about it, it's not causing you any downtime. It happens in the background. So poor uh, ran out of tapes is also a concern out there. Um, you know, you ran out of volumes in the robot not to play off of our robot software, but the robotic device that mounts the tapes and stuff, you ran out. Somebody put the tapes out of order during COVID-19. So you had the wrong tapes uh, in, in the uh, tape, tape stacker and what do you do? Somebody has to go in the office and fix that problem. You ran out of space on the VTL, so you didn't plan for enough disk space. That is, I mean, these are disk units. Think of a virtual tape library as a SAN storage unit where you're storing your backups. You can run out of disk space if you don't maintain them properly and purge and archive and things like that. No one was there to change tapes. That certainly probably bit a few of us during this epidemic, I would, would imagine. So then as we look at poorly written business applications, um, bug your vendor. Tell them they have to stop doing this. There are still banking software out there. There is other software out there that requires, you know, a pre and post backup, but does it have to go to tape? It could go to a save file instead, and then you still back up outside of that so you can run the stuff unattended. If people have to manually take a menu option to do that, it's, it's crazy. So you can do things like retrieve sales source to figure these things out yourself, which libraries, which IFFs objects, are, are changing is really where you should be focusing your backups on. Um, you know, again, if I were to inherit any of your systems, I would look at those data areas first, and then I would look at the libraries and the IFS directories on a weekly basis to find out what's changing, and I build my backup rules around the things that are changing on the system. You know, Reality is, at the end of the day, even though you have a poorly written business application, you're probably not going to switch that vendor out because of manual backups. They're, you know, why is IBM I still around today? It's because it runs a lot of core business applications, right? We are known as the system of records. Uh, it's unfortunate that some of the applications that um, are still running today have never been modified from a standpoint of how you do the backups. All right, Chuck, over to well, you to talk a little bit about uh, solutions to these roadblocks. Yeah, exactly. There, so solutions to roadblocks. We're talking about automation, ways to automate your backup, whether it's a full system or a daily backup or whatnot. So tape loading devices. So we're talking about an ATL automated tape tape library. Some way to have those tape movements or tape loading of the tape device happen automatically. So for many years that have been, you know, whether it's a small uh, tape library or very large tape libraries that some of our customers have that literally contain hundreds of physical tape volumes, 
those have been used for many years. But what's really been catching on, and basically I think, Tom, we're catching up with the, uh, you know, the, the Windows servers and the Linux servers of the world is um, IBM I has adopted virtual tape library technology, which is basically a server that contains a number of disk units where it emulates a IBM 30, TS3500 or similar tape library. So basically you can drop a virtual tape library in for a traditional physical tape library and execute all the same commands. And whether you execute those commands through a CL program or you use a tape management solution like Robot Save, BRMS, and, and so forth, those solutions have the um, the, the uh, knowledge to talk to those tape libraries, to do tape inventories, to load the correct tape volumes, and to understand what's loaded in your, in your uh, tape library. And there's many other uh, advantages to tape libraries, like automatically replicating uh, the backup data from a tape, uh, from a virtual tape library that's on site to one that's off site. So basically eliminating that roadblock of, of manual uh, tape volume handling. And they have right. encryption built in too, right, Chuck? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Whether you do hardware encryption at the tape, uh, device, tape device level or at the VTL level, you are encrypting that data. So when you're moving it off site, you know, it is, it is encrypted. Uh, IBM flash copy, uh, that is awesome, awesome technology that I see more and more folks um, adopting. It does require um, SAN to be part of your um, uh, configuration of your too. power let's server. Be, let's be 100% yes. you know, specific. It has to be an IBM SAN. It can't be EMC yeah. or something like that. Yeah, that's that's a good point. And so flash copy is, you know, some people call it a snapshot. Basically, it's a bitmap. Everything starts out as zeros, and then you can you can take that flash copy and you can attach it to another uh, partition to do a backup. And then it tracks what sectors of your disk have changed. So you are getting that point in time backup. Even if you're doing an HA solution, you must have point in time backups. All right. Yeah, you know, and Chuck, in the tape management area, we often get the question, you know, what's the difference between robot save and BRMS? And, um, well, one of the things you should know is that technically help systems works on both of the products. So anything that you saw new in 7.4, anything that you see new coming out down the road has all been done by help systems over the last, you know, three years now. Difference is robot save is more menu driven. You don't really need to be a programmer. You can be an operator. You don't have to have commands, knowledge, things like that. And, and, and the product will help you do your backups. BRMS need you need to be a little more command oriented um certainly helps to have been on the system for a while to work with the product but either where either way they'll both get you to that automated tape tracking yeah and we'll show a little bit of robot save here at the end yeah An yep An another automation technology that we're seeing with ibm i are cloud backups there are it, there is some criteria surrounding cloud backups for ibm i so we're talking about uh, uh, rather than saving to a, uh, a tape device that's directly attached to IBM I, you're doing more of a network style uh, backup. You're backing up to a server or directly, a server either on site or one that's, uh, that is uh, hosted by a, a cloud provider. And, and think about this, Tom, we do this maybe every day with our PCs or our Macs that we have at home. I use a cloud backup service with my Mac that I have at home. Hmm. The criteria on IBM I is that it's smaller systems. So we're talking about a terabyte or less. I've got a um, 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 an auto manufacturer who's using um, a um, cloud backup to do about 200 gigs, about 200 yeah. gigs of backup. Right. And, we say uh, less than a terabyte, but that's probably more the reality is maybe half a terabyte of disk space yeah and why is that exactly what's, what's going Say on again. why why is again. that why is there that kind of disk space limitation well yeah so we're talking of course the bandwidth uh to move that data off site we're talking about the also the expense all right so you're literally renting disk space for multiple 
incremental backups, multiple point in time backups that are off uh, in that server technology. So, you know, it, it, it can add up. And keep in mind that cloud backups do have other criteria surrounding them for restores, all right? So just because you're doing a cloud backup does not mean that you, you don't have to do, for instance, a save sys. You must still have a save sys tape that you can, that you can uh, uh, boot up from, so to speak. Uh, other options for cloud backups, Amazon, all right? So Tom, does Amazon now support IBM Power? You know, I have not seen Amazon yet in the cust in the vendors that are supporting IBM Power yet. Not that I know yeah, of. I, yeah, I know I, and, Google. I know yeah. IBM itself. I know Microsoft Azure is partnered with SkyTap, but yeah, Amazon I haven't heard. I really haven't yeah, heard. Yeah, and so regardless with these with these cloud backups it's important that you know what the restore criteria is and, and from looking at uh people's systems that are using cloud backups now uh reporting is a little different the restore process is very different so it's important to understand exactly what that looks like and to practice it so you're not doing it for the first time in the heat of the battle yeah and keep keep in mind you have to bring that data back across the wire so you may be able to back up a terabyte or two terabytes because that's running in the background, but when you actually want to restore it, how quickly do you want it back and how quickly can you get it back? Yep. Right. Yeah, so your exactly. recovery time objective might be multiple days before you can rebuild that system. Can you afford that as a business? Right. Exactly. Well, let's talk about nope. BTL vendors, Tom. I, th I think maybe we beat that one to death a little bit. Okay. We did. Let's move, we did. <laughs> let's move ahead. Yeah. BTL yeah, vendors. BTL oh, vendors. So, Tom. I didn't know yeah, there was that many. There, it's a long list, and there's actually a few more out there, too. We've worked with all of these. And, in fact, um, we've been running BTL technology in our lab for uh, 15 years. We actually started with the, the Sphinx VTL. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've worked with cybernetics. We've worked with uh, Laser Vault quite extensively. We've got lots of customers using what was the EMC data domain, now the Dell data domain. Uh, DSI uh, VTL technology is very much prevalent out there in industry, Falcon Store, et cetera. And then, of course, we've got the cloud based uh, options. Uh, Vault 400, as well as the eVault, which was purchased by Carbonite. And, you know, many of us might be using Carbonite, like I said, to back up our Macs or PCs from home, but Carbonite also offers the eVault technology. But the, uh, the VTL technology has lots of advantages. One of the reasons we're listing all these vendors is that you need to do your due diligence. They all have a good product. It's important to understand what the differences are between them and what kind of customer support you'll get out of each one of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What else can we say? We don't see the IBM Protect here anymore there. If you had Protect here, you probably know by now IBM has removed support for that and eventually you're going to need to get out of it um, there are many other options up here that you can use and they all work with robot save or ERMS. okay sounds good Tom. all right let's talk robot save for volume tracking and for automation of that activity so if you don't know robot save has been around uh wow since 1989 and I know that because when I came to help systems back 32 years ago, one of the things I wanted was an automatic backup and recovery software for my AS400. And uh, I helped champion this product for, for help systems. And uh, it was kind of based on some CLs and stuff like that I wrote back in the day on the System 38 platform. So, um, but the thing that we didn't have back then was this ability to track tape so easily. Before we had to, dump all the object inventory to a out file or a spool file read what volumes were on the you know it was really ugly but then you know about 1992 ibm came out with a exit point every time you did a backup you'd get a call that would say here's the volume id that you use so that was really sweet then uh, media storage extensions came out and today that's what 
Robot Save and BRMS both use for automatically tracking your tapes. So as the system has a tape mount or does a backup, that API gets called, we sit on that API or exit and we get all the tape activity. So we literally can track not only the backups that you're running through Robot Save, but we can also track tapes that if Bill, the administrator, goes to a command line and does a save object, we can, we can track that. Better yet, we can say, hey, Bill, the administrator tried to write over a good backup tape and we don't allow it. So we put expiration dates on it. We do central tape management, tape vaulting, and then we help you with that restore area. You can always go in and restore things um, with the audit reports that we have and the volume management reports. These are the things that the auditors like. And the nice thing about having an automated backup recovery software like this for tracking tapes is that you can just generate a report on how to restore the system. So restricted states we automate, we back up the IFS, we have an inventory, and we, of course we can work with virtual tape libraries and AMLs. So we're gonna help you automate by cataloging when volumes are used. We're gonna calculate expiration dates. So one of the neat things about Robot Save and the difference between it and BRMS is on every physical tape or logical volume that we write, we put an actual expiration date versus uh, a permanent expiration date. So a little subtle difference between BRMS and Robot Save on that regards. And then we build an inventory of what's on the volume. So you, as Chuck will show you, we can see it both ways, by object, by volume, by library. And this cross-reference is available to you online. So here's an example of the save management menu inside of Robot Save. Um, this is showing you that we can look at our backup classes and sets to see volume information by logical backups like daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly. Um, we can look at it by volume name, by container. Uh, ad hoc, this is where Bill, the administrator, did a save object outside of Robot Save. We can track those, scratch pools, and then other media volume movement history is in the product too. The object archive, if I were to rename this today, I would really just refer to it as object inventory because really what it's used for primarily is tracking what, where the objects are and what volumes. Libraries, folders, source files, IFS, even if you're still running Domino, save config, save da sec data, you can see all that information there. Um, that was gonna make a good, oh, and, and technically robot save can be an HSM product too, hierarchical storage management. We can actually remove objects from the system if they haven't been used for a while. Um, not a lot of people do that on IBM I, but technically Robot Save supports that and, and technically BRMS supports that too for that matter. So Chuck, I guess it's time for you to shine. So we're gonna have you um, do a uh, live demonstration for us of Robot Save. As Great. As I find your name here and make you presenter. Are you ready to show off your system? I am, let me know when you can see my screen. I see your screen. All right, so uh, we're actually gonna start out inside a robot schedule because we have our backups automated, fully automated. And uh, so you see my list of backups that I'm running on my, uh, my partition called Wisdom. And this is my daily backup. And what I wanted to show you here is not so much the setup of the backup, we are using the RBS save command to execute the backup as defined in robot save. All right, so what I wanna do is I wanna show you the results of this backup. And we're gonna start by looking at, you know, how, how often this job runs and um, uh, how long it takes, what sort of success indicators that we have. Of course, I've got robots sending me some notification when my backup starts and, and ends and if there's any issues. And you can see my backup time on this partition is just a little bit under an hour usually. And the last time it ran was on the 15th, all right, so just last night. And if we look at the spool files that were generated out of this uh, backup, uh, remember, this is a daily backup. We run a full system on the weekends, and then we do a library-type backup um, uh, on a daily basis. So as Tom mentioned, there are audit reports and restoration reports that are generated out of Robot Save when you do a backup. All right, so the audit report, I wish I would have had this when I was in the real world. So uh, what this tells you is 
all right, we're running our daily backup out of robot save and the volume that was used, so part of the tape cataloging process, in this case, the volume that was used was TAP01. We're gonna go look at that in robot uh, save here in just a minute. And then listed is all of the libraries and where they were saved to, all right? And if it was multiple tapes, the volume information will be listed next to the next to the library name. All right. I like so the it's one that says skip, list. Chuck. You know, that's kind of nice. Yeah. From an auditor perspective, you can say, look, we purposely skipped this library for whatever reason, and it's defined right on this audit report. Exactly. Yep. Like right here. So we actually told Robot Save to not save certain libraries. And likewise, we have a save code of SL that indicates save live. So we know exactly what lib or how the, the data was saved. And also this indicates where there might have been errors. So in this case, there were locks on some data queues. So we could not back up those objects, but that's not a big deal in this case. And, but what's important to know is what didn't get saved. Because if you're just running a CL, you're not seeing this information, you would have to dive into a job log and analyze that information. So that's the audit report. The other thing that you're getting is you're getting a restoration procedure. So this is something that literally you can hand to your auditor to say, I have a complete documented procedure for restoring my system with every backup that you run. And it starts with, well, where does your save sys? Uh, data, uh, where is that located? What volume is it located on? So we tell you what volumes are needed to restore your system. And in this case, my uh, my wisdom WSDM 21 volume has my save sys information. And then likewise, we saw that TAP01 has my, uh, my uh, most recent library backup, all right, TAP01. So we're gonna go look at that inside of robot save so we have our audit report and we have our restoration procedures so let's go look at our robot save menu now all right so the first thing with robot save is you might just want to know well what about the success of my backup all right so we can look at the backup log so here's my daily and full system backups that were ran we can see we had we had warnings here on my daily backup all right so just by Selecting that, we can see that there were certain libraries that were completely saved. Right? And likewise, on my daily backup, I can say, well, what objects were those? All right, so this looks just like that printed audit report, but it's online. All right, this is easy to check from home if you're working from home, right? Easy, yeah, super, super <laughs> easy. Okay, so so these are these are the logs right so you've got document documentation as to what ran when did it run did it run successfully and so forth but let's go look at those volumes now that tom was mentioning okay so uh, we're going to look at our volume catalog and we're going to start with wisdom 21 that had our full system save sys information on it all right, and if I just take an option three for volume information, it says, okay, that was used with our full system backup. When was it used? How many times has that volume been used? Now, keep in mind, Tom, we're using a virtual tape library. Right. All right. But if you're using physical media, tracking the number of times that a volume is used is important. Okay, we're doing that for you automatically. Hmm. Okay, likewise, what's on this volume? All right, we have DLO, we have IFS, and we have library information on this volume. Okay, so that was my full system. TAP001 had my daily backup. Let's just verify that. Okay, TAP01 was used with our daily backup on the 15th. All right. And likewise, what, what is on that particular volume? We have IFS group. That's a unique feature of Robot Save that allows you to do granular backups of the IFS. So I'm only backing up that portion of the IFS that's important to me that changes on a regular basis. Like maybe I'm storing PDFs out there and I want to back up that PDF directory on a regular basis and then my production libraries. Tom, this is all about restoring your data. So mm -hmm. let's go to the <clears throat> object archive menu. And let's look at our restore options. All right, 
And let's just look at, I'll just look at my library for now. Okay, so one of the things that you're gonna see here is that my library is listed multiple times. All right, so I can go back in time to restore any library or objects, depending on how, what my archive strategy is inside of Robot Safe. All right, and nice. uh, let's say I just, I wanna go back to the 13th, let's say. All right, so here's my objects uh, as they were at 20 hundred hours on the 13th. All right, so if there's a file that I need to quickly restore, uh, let's say it's, uh, uh, let's pick a file, any file. You have to quickly make a decision. That's the biggest decision here, it right? It is, <laughs> it is. Uh, yeah, I'll just tell you what, I'll just restore this one. So there is a restore option. And then huh. I could do this either with an IFS object or a library object, but it's option three. And the and cool it's coming thing off is, your VTL, that, right? is exactly so now robot save is going to talk to the vtl it's going to load up the proper volume tap whatever it was which is recorded in the archive and uh, i'm going to i'm going to submit this restore so i'm going to submit it to batch all right and not only are we going to track the save process but we're also tracking the um the restore process and i, I tom i did want to show how in the archive for any of these objects, it's also showing you what tape volume those <clears> objects <throat> live on. Ah, All right, and nice. that's what's being fed to the VTL to restore, uh, to populate the restore command. So if my auditor wants to know, did anybody do any restores, is that documented too? It is, there you go. Restores, restores running, restores so we've run. got that in our history. Ah. That was kind of a loaded question, but it was ad lib. Yeah, so. it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but right. we're, uh, Tom, we're at our 45 minute Ooh, mark. So and we got some questions. We, we got a few more completing. things to talk about. So let me move right. ahead then. Um, that means I got to take back presenter control. Let me do that. And. There we are. So that was a live demo. With all this, we also have services. We can always help you out. And when you think about a help systems today, think about you know, the fact that we can help you with backup and high availability, uh, with Robot HA, Power HA, BRMS, and Robot Save. Document management, we can help you with archiving documents, cybersecurity, monitoring, business intelligence, capacity planning, troubleshooting capacity performance issues, and of course, automation. As we've been talking about today, um, one of the things you will always appreciate or love with Help Systems is our support. Great people standing by to help you out. Give them a call, drop them an email. And um, new today is we even have our Help Systems Insider. If you haven't seen this yet, you should be getting an email on it or should have. Otherwise, just go out to uh, insiders.helpsystems.com and it's a new kind of forum for you. Um, and let's do our last polling question that I just skipped over. How can we help you? And let me bring that up here. Before we do some questions and answers, how can Help Systems help you? I'll launch this, leave it up in the background. Uh, maybe you want a demo, a deeper dive into Robot Save. You'd like to start a trial of Robot Save. We need some help with services to implement. I'd like to hear more about HA and DR. I do a lot of talks today on high availability and how it works and how it fits into your backup plan. Um, or maybe you just wanna talk with uh, Chuck or I and get a technology update and everything, what's new at Help Systems. We probably do one or two of those a day these days where we have customers on the phone for about an hour and we, we talk about what's on your roadmap, we share with what's on our roadmap and it ends up being a really good discussion for, for both of us and we encourage you. You can select multiples of those if you'd like. So uh, go right ahead and Fill that out, and Chuck, we have a question or two here. Where do the system values get saved from Gary? I'm yeah, and I'm assuming that's the you know which save command saves <laughs> system values, and you know it's I'm absolutely I'm not positive. Save, save sys, sys. yeah, save sys. They're not picked up with save sec data or save config. So Gary, what you really need to do. For system values, if you change the defaults on system values, which I'm sure you have, especially with password settings and things like that, you mm -hmm. should put those changes into a CLP. 
a CLP script, a control language program script, and back that up and keep that around so that if you ever have to bring back your system from scratch and you don't have a good safe sys, um, you can always get those things modified. And I used to put not only system values in my script, but I'd also put uh, things like changing printer files, you know, any other operating system defaults that are inside the operating system, which system values are, you're gonna want this. Okay, um, question. Do you have a recommendation on how many times the tape volume should be used from Dean? That would be by manufacturer's uh, uh, recommended, uh, you know, a number of times. So every manufacturer would be different. Uh, we don't have recommendations, and honestly, we've been using VTL for so long. Um, boy, I can't remember the last time I loaded a tape. Yeah, and that's. I'm glad you answered the way you did, Chuck. Um, really, it's a by manufacturer. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. George wanted to respond to the poll, and you couldn't, and I removed the poll already. So I apologize. Just send us a question of what you're interested in, and we'll help you out. Or um, just you know, email Chuck or I, Tom dot Huntington at HelpSystems.com. We'll take care of you. Any tips on RSU backup using a console where the HMC does not? have the council up from Peggy. Uh, no. I don't, yeah, I don't in particular, but I mean, uh, you know, typically when I'm uh, automating a full system restricted state backup, I'm using robot save in our utility. Tom, your thoughts? I think that's what she's saying. She's using RSU um, and I believe that's, that's where she's coming from. Uh, HMC does not have a council up um, because RSU does run from that interactive display. Um, I want to say you can run that in batch these days too. So um, I know BRMS offers that too. So uh, we should probably dig, dig a little deeper into that one. It's a good question, Peggy, and maybe take that one offline for you. Um, yeah. But I know we're we're probably, what, seven minutes beyond what we promised in our webinar today. We want to make sure that you're not late for your next meeting. I want to thank all of you for uh, join us today on a, another webinar from Help Systems. Um, have a great uh, rest of the month. Enjoy your 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 summertime, and uh, we'll talk to you soon on our next webinar. Thank you, Chuck. Great. Yep. Thanks, everybody. Bye, bye.